Hi, I'm Neil, and today we're going to be looking at the console 206 RB, and we're going to go over the timing and, and uh, many other things, and hope you all enjoy the video. Okay, so then first off, we're going to show the timing. So when I turn, you always turn your hand wheel towards you. I'm going to bring the needle bar down as low as it'll go. It's called bottom dead center. I'm going to take my fingernail and go up to the top bar of the needle bar where it dis disappears into the to the um, casing of the machine, the rock frame. I'm going to measure down an eighth of an inch with my fingernail. I'm going to turn the hand wheel towards me so that that needle bar will come up an eighth of an inch. And at that point, the point of the hook should be right square in the needle. If it isn't, then you would take and loosen this screw here. And turn around to the another one. And just loosen it just, as, just enough that we're going to be able to turn the hook. Sometimes after years of being tightened up in the same spot, they, they want to be contrary and doesn't want to turn that easily. So we're going to bring that down, measure an eighth of an inch again on the needle bar. And you can see that at this point here, this machine's timed up. Point is right at the needle. If it wasn't, I would take and reach down underneath and turn the hook this way or that way until it's right square at the needle. And that's that point right there. And then you're going to make sure it's not too far away from left and right. So then I just take my screwdriver and push it, turn it so that it's, it's tight into the needle without hitting the needle. This, in this case here you can see that it's just bouncing off the needle slightly so I'm going to tap it that way. Bring it back again. Gently turn the hand wheel towards me until I can find a screw to tighten it up. And it moved on me. So let's turn it all the way around so the needle bar comes down to the lowest point. I'm going to measure an eighth of an inch with my fingernail. Keep it there and then turn the hand wheel so that it comes up and touches the rock frame. At that point you can see that it has still right at the needle. But it's too far away so I'm going to loosen that screw off again. Turn that all the way around. An eighth of an inch. Okay. Right like that. And then we're going to tighten my screw up the, again and see if she'll stay in one spot here. No, she stayed there that time. And turn the other screw. Should be good. That would be how you time this particular machine, the, one, the 206RB. Okay, I might point out on the console 206RB, this particular model, some are different. When we do our timing on the hook in this area here, this particular model has a groove that the screw fits into. So you can't turn this hook by loosening the screws off because you get the first screw that comes to view first when you're turning the hand wheel towards you is in a groove. So I would follow across the shaft here You'll notice right here be, beside this clutch, there's three screws, one there, one there, and one there. I will loosen them off and do our timing the way I just explained earlier. And then of course just tighten one back up and recheck your timing. And on this particular model it would be done here instead of here. Okay, next we're going to talk about the height of the needle bar. Once you've set the timing, you turn the hand wheel towards you so that needle bar will come down all the way down and go back up an eighth of an inch by turning your hand wheel towards you. At that point we've got we've set our timing up. So now we have to check and make sure our needle bar is not too high or not too low. This particular machine does not have timing marks to go by. So we would look and make sure that the point of the hook is going right through the scarf and the needle about 
center position, right about where that screwdriver is sitting right now. You can see the scarf and the needle. That always goes to your right when you put your needle in. You see the eye and the needle, the top part of the scarf, and the point of the hook is going to go right through the center of it. And if it doesn't, then we would come over here. Okay, we would reach into the side of the machine here and loosen the screw off that, that clamps onto the needle bar. And loosen that off and you would move your needle bar up or down so that that point of the hook would be in the scarf and the needle that we were just talking about. And that's how you would adjust your needle bar. Okay, next we'll talk about when the, when the machine gets jammed up with thread. You're going to get thread jammed up that this hook base will not turn because there's thread jammed between the hook base and the hook itself. So what you would have to do is take and loosen this screw here. It's called the position finger holds that base in the place from turning. Loosen the screw off and take it right out. And you would come down from the top. Just give it a little push. Position finger off, and then that way we'd be able to get at the, the base itself. Now you can see it's going to turn with the hook. So you would take and loosen either three little screws off here and take this gib off to get the thread out, or if not, sometimes you can just get a little screwdriver in here and tap it backwards very gently and it'll kick the thread out. And once you've kicked the thread out, then you can put your position finger back into place. Okay, once, once you've cleaned the thread out over on the hook over here, then you would take and check and see if the machine has been thrown, if it, if it been thrown out. It's got a safety device right here where my screwdriver is. You turn it by hand, I'm going to go around here like that. You'll see there's a ball bearing right there fitting into the sleeve here. If that's driven out, then of course you've got to get, push on a button there. It sits on this plate. We'll show you in just a second. It comes in through and holds on to this piece right here and holds it stationary while you turn your hand wheel until this part of the shaft spins around and this ball bearing will fall back into place and then you've you've set this clutch back into place and the button of course is right here you would just press that button down and keep turning your hand wheel by hand it's going to fall into a hole and then you would turn it until it snaps back into place of course right now it's not going to turn because the clutch is all in where it's supposed to and that's your Clutch and dust adjustments. Next, we'll take the tension assembly off and show you how to, how to replace the take up spring. So loosen the screw off down below here. Screw here. Now pull the tension assembly out. Loosen this little nut off there. Take it off. Of course that all comes out and you would take the spring off, replace it if it was broken, lay it back into place, put the stud back in and you'll notice right there there's a groove and then on the spring itself, it's got a little spring there, we're going to set that in there so I can slide that stud into place. We'll stay, put the tension assembly back in, back in where it's supposed to go. Okay. Uh, screw in the top part of it first. Tighten it up. And I'm going to reach down wind this stud up. It's going to put spring on. Pressure on that take up spring right about there. You don't need a whole lot just an even pressure and then take and turn, tighten the screw up that goes in through here. Put the nut back on. And 
use your take up spreader. Okay. Okay, next is oiling the machine up. I'm going to oil all the red marks that you see on this machine. Any little hole, sometimes some of the machines, maybe the oil marks might be all worn off. So then just put a little bit of oil on anything you see, any hole that you might see. Come down across the front here. Okay, now you notice there's there is some holes on the base of the machine. Some of them are plugged up, some aren't. We'll just stick a little bit of oil on all of them. Now, a very important spot is would be the hook and the base. Where the hook travels around the base, the base is staying stationary. I'll we'll put an oil here and you put the oil in there at least once a day. That keeps that all well oiled or wear that hook out at $195 to $200 to replace. We'll tip the machine back and anything that we see turning, put a drop of oil on. Can't get too much. And that basically covers most of that. And one other spot here. Get the camera to zoom in over here. There's a screw on this casing. Some of these machines, the okay, case is long gone, some aren't. Take that screw out and put a little bit of oil in there or some people will use grease as well. The grease already in there so I'm just going to put a little bit of extra oil in there. Tighten that screw back up. And if that casing is missing, if that's not even on there, all you do is you put a little bit of grease on the gears, keeps them quieter. Do for the oiling. Next, we'll talk about the tension on the belt and clutch adjustments. As you can see, the belt is fairly tight here. So, what we're going to do is go in underneath on the motor itself. I'm going to loosen this nut off right here. Yeah, I'm just going to loosen it and bring it up just slightly, just over oh, half, half an inch. And I'm going to squeeze the belt together so it hauls that motor up. And then tighten that nut back up again right at that point. Bring the bottom one up to, to meet. And then tighten those two nuts up. camera back up to look at the belt here and as you can see I've got it squeezed about halfway in and what that will do will make it easier to control the machine when you start out the tighter the belt is the faster it might take off on you now we'll go back in underneath the machine and we'll check the clutch adjustments as you can see the actuating lever is going down a good inch and a quarter or so so what we'll do, I'm going to bring the clutch up the meat, so there's not quite as much play there. So we'll loosen the screw off, which is the screw for the brake. I'm going to loosen this nut off here. And I'm going to turn this down. And what that's going to do, it's going to haul this lever down closer to the motor. Where the motor runs at one speed. So bring that down right there. You just want just a little bit of play between the clutch and the motor. In other words, if you get it too tight to the motor, it's going to try and run the machine when you start the motor up. You don't want that. So tighten this. Tighten the screw back up for the brake. And you see there's just a little bit of play with what you want. Now if you have to bring this lever down too far by winding this nut in because the clutch is getting worn that bad, of course that hauls this lever down 
then you're going to have to take and loosen this screw on the pitman rod to bring your pedal back up again. But this still got a good angle on it, the clutch not that worn. And that would be your clutch adjustments. Okay, next we're going to fill a bobbin. I'll show you how, how, to, how to adjust it up if you're any problem filling. In that hole around your detention assembly, we'll go over to the bobbin. As you notice, it's split. If the bobbin goes on too easily, all you would do is stick a screwdriver in there and just spread that slightly so the bobbin will go on there without spinning. Taking some thread in there, push the bobbin winder on. Notice it snapped off. If I wanted to put a little bit more thread on that, I would take and wind this screw down. A little bit more. That should be enough. And if it was overfilling, started filling outside the bobbin, then you would wind the screw counterclockwise so it snapped off quicker. So next we're going to thread the bobbin up and then thread the machine up. So we're going to thread that up, catch that groove there, keep turning it and falling underneath that spring. If you've got to increase or decrease your tension, in other words, you want a good little pull on there, and if you're happy with that, it's all done with the screw right there. You either turn it clockwise to tighten your tension up or counterclockwise to loosen it. Most of your tension is going to be adjusted from up, from up above. But once you get that with a good little tug on there, then just leave that like that. And tip the machine back, and I should show you where the bobbin would actually sit in the place. You look down in here, there's only one spot it's going to fall into, and with these machines, it's all you'll have to turn the hand wheel and sometimes it'll fall right in. And it snaps into place. Once you get used to it, you can just reach right underneath there and drop that bobbin case in without even looking. Once you've done that, I'm going to take the machine back down. Take my thread, look up here, thread the stud there, just catch a hole here and there. Second one, first one, skip the second one, go into the third hole. Around detention assembly, catch the take up spring. Okay, through the take up lever. down and catch all these guides on the way down. Back one. So I'll move that one. There we go. Contour and of course it threads from the knee through the needle from left to right. In other words towards the bobbin. Okay and like any machine bring up your bottom thread. And we're ready to start sewing. Okay, next is your tensions and, and their adjustments. So we're going to run a strip across here. adjusted anything up yet and you can see it's laying good on the top what's it look like on the bottom it's laying good on the bottom so what would happen if it was too loose on the top we'll wind that back as you can see it doesn't look very good up here so in other words there's no tension on the top so the threads all laying on the bottom so we 
we'll line this up. You just take a guess. We'll just take a couple of turns. You see, we're still laying on the bottom. Just okay. You can see that I can pick the thread out across here. So we're still laying on the bottom a fair amount. So we're going to increase that top tension some more. Line in another two turns. And we're still a little on the loose side. Line in another two turns. Now, as you can see, we're getting too tight on the top now. You can see the lid is starting to pull through to the top. The bottom might look okay, but it's starting to come up to the top, so we've gone too tight. We just wind that back just another turn and a half. And this is a middle stitch seam. Yep, we look even both top and bottom down. The top, bottom, and then there's the top. That would be your tension adjustments. Next is stitch length adjustment. On this machine, of course, it's quite straightforward. I'm going to wind this down. The longer I wind that, go to your counterclockwise, the longer the stitch, stitch length is going to be. Of course, it reverses up the same distance that way. If you want a shorter stitch, you go in the opposite direction. So that's quite straightforward. And next, we'll go into walking foot adjustments. I'm going to take the camera and go back over here where my screwdriver is. As you can see, I'm walking the inside foot's lifting about the thickness of my screwdriver. The outside foot isn't quite. So if that's the case, we will take it back here. See this screw right there? Okay. If we look back down at the foot, pressure feet, I want the outside foot to lift the, evenly with the inside foot. So in order to do that, I'm going to turn the hand wheel towards me. I want to bring this inside foot just so that it's going to be oh about there. And I want to loosen that screw here. Okay, and that drops this inside foot. And now, when we turn the hammer, you're going to notice it's lifting considerably higher on the outside now, and very little on the inside, so it's gone too far. So I'm just going to lift the inside foot up just slightly as I'm turning the hand wheel, not too much. Okay, and I am loosen that same screw. Just keep the camera looking down there. I'm loosen that same screw. Should let that outside foot drop, which it did. And that should that makes the inside foot lift a little bit higher. So that screw will work for both. That just turns them around so that you can get to lift them evenly. They're so. Now say you were doing sewing some hard to sew materials or something like a lot of seams. Okay. seam here. Sometimes it might they stick when they cut it. When this comes off the seam it might stick in one spot. So in that case there you would take and you can slide this slide here if you look at here. Slide here with the wing nut. Loosen that wing nut up. You can take and that's on a slide. You slide that up in the air. And that just makes these feet walk higher. 
you're doing a lot of flat sewing, you don't need that. All that's for is if you're climbing up and down the seams. But if you're doing a lot of flat sewing, you would adjust that slide back down as far as it'll go. That would be your work for adjustments. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you picked up a few pointers here and there. And uh, thanks again.